why, do you accept my premise that there are that there seems to be a lot of evangelical voters skepticism about Dr. Paul? And if you do, where do you think that comes from, Tom? Well, I think uh, there, there's skepticism in a lot of quarters, not just evangelicals, but I think it's beginning to melt away as people who may have looked at him as being a little bit crankish in 2008 realize, well, wait a minute. I mean, he, he did, after all, predict the, exactly what's happening to us now. You have to give him credit for that. And I think a lot of, I think some of the, even some of the things he's saying on foreign policy and how much it's all costing us, and is it really conservative to be sending our armed forces to spread feminism in Afghanistan? I mean, this is, that's not conservative. Mm-hmm. I, I think more, more people, as they see the debt problem accelerating, are willing to give him a second look. And when I saw the speech he gave at the Values Voters Summit last month, and I just posted it at my site, TomWoods.com, I, I was very impressed. I mean, he'll be the first to admit that he's not the best public speaker in the world. He has great qualities. He's extremely smart. He has a 30-year consistent track record, and he's got a great, great personal integrity. But that speech, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if people changed their minds in order to vote for him in that speech. So I think when people listen to him, they say, you know, he sounds okay. But when they allow themselves to have their opinions formed for them by Bill O'Reilly, or, or Sean Hannity, or NPR, or any of these people. And their, their view basically is, if you don't fall somewhere between Joe Biden and Mitt Romney, you are by definition a crank. Well, look, I refuse to put myself in that box. <laughs> and I, I'm glad that we have somebody like Ron Paul, who, refu- who not only doesn't want to be in that box, he wants to crush that box into the ground and then set it on fire. 